another 1,000 years. The number rolled around in Luna's mind so many times that it didn't even sound like Ponish to her after a while, but the number was still there as plain as day, and there was no getting around it. She may have returned to her beloved homelands, and her sister would be by her side as she always was, but there was no ignoring the fact that this was no longer the world that she once knew. Even in this place, this canterlot in which she now stood was something new and grand that she'd have to get used to. But let it never be said that Celestia didn't do all in her power to make her sister feel welcome in this bizarre place. The chambers that had been set aside for her after her return were in many ways an exact replica of her quarters back in their old castle in the Everfree, right down to the arrangement of the books on the shelf. Luna was grateful, of course, but even with this comfortable blanket of familiarity, she knew there was much work ahead of her. However, for now, she put such thoughts aside as there was a sudden knocking on her door. Yes? A couple of seconds passed before a voice could be heard on the other side. Princess Luna, may I enter? It was a mare from the sound of things, and Luna considered the request. She still wasn't the most social of ponies, but she had just spent the last ten centuries by herself. And since she's hardly spoken to any pony beside her sister since arriving in the capital, she silently decided that it might be time to start making some connections. So after giving a small nod that she only realized in hindsight that no pony would even see, she answered. Yes, please, come in. She heard the creak of her door behind her, as well as the sound of hoofsteps. And after a few moments more, she took in a deep breath, ready to start her efforts to reintegrate with Ponykind, turning to greet the new arrival. So, how may I help you? She had trailed off as she spoke those words, for what she now saw was probably the last thing she'd expected. Her visitor was, as predicted, a mare. But that's where the expectations ended. She was tall, with a largely pink coloring about her, and undoubtedly the most noticeable thing about her was that she bore not only wings, but a horn, just as Luna did. After a long and uncomfortable silence, this mystery mare finally spoke up again. I'm sorry for disturbing your solitude, but I feel like you and I need to meet. After staring at her for the longest time, Luna gave a solemn nod. Yes, I believe we do. The younger Alicorn glanced around the room briefly, spotting a table and a couple of chairs by the window, which she now gestured to. May I? She saw Luna nod silently to her, accepting her request, and soon the two were walking towards them together. They got settled in, a feeling of surprise, confusion, and just general awkwardness permeating the room at this point. After thinking hard on how best to start this meeting, the pink mare finally just blurted out the obvious. So, I'm guessing you have questions? Luna did indeed have questions, and a plethora of them all swirling around in her head. After a short while, though, she elected to ask the most basic of them. Who are you? Her fellow alicorn gave a bow of her head. My name is Miyamara Cadenza. That's a bit of a mouthful. Luna remarked, not really thinking before she had said it. Thankfully, this Miyamore wasn't concerned, giving a quick giggle. Well, most of my friends just call me Cadence. With that icebreaker out of the way, Luna at last got down to the meat of the conversation. So you are an alicorn. Cadence's earlier smile faded, replaced with a more serious look. Yes, I am. I imagine that must be a surprising thing for you to see. Luna looked away briefly. It is. For many centuries prior to my imprisonment, my sister and I were the only such ponies in all of the world. And when I returned, I expected that to still be the case. She looked back to her visitor. For another of our elk to be in this world is an unexpected development. Cadence chuckled dryly. Oh, trust me, it was a shock for me too when it happened. Luna tilted her head in a sign of curiosity. Pray tell, exactly how did it happen? My sister and I accomplished our change through great magical feats, the rising of the sun and moon. So what was it that you did to change yourself, Miamor? Cadence sighed. Well, it certainly wasn't any plan of mine, if that's what you were wondering. I imagine it wasn't. Luna replied. Even so... Cadence looked to one side, raising her hoof and tapping the side of her cheek. It's... it's a long story. I have no doubt. But since I am in no need to be elsewhere, take whatever time you need. Luna said softly. Cadence smiled, then looked deep in thought, recounting old memories that were no doubt amongst the most important events of her life. Well, it all began in the village that I had called home for so many years. Evil was taking hold there, and it was a powerful dark magic that was stealing love from others. I went to face the one that was causing it, and after coming out as the victor, here I am. Luna nodded slowly as she considered that. Oh, an act of heroism against formidable dark powers. Yes, it makes sense that a transformation such as this might be the consequence. Caden shook her head. I'll be honest, Princess Luna, I lived a fairly sheltered life up until that point. I didn't even know alicorns existed until I became one. And when it happened, my whole life changed. 
I met Princess Celestia, took up residence here in Canterlot. It was also overwhelming. For the first time today, Luna smiled. I can imagine. I still remember when T and I changed from what we were. Our appearance, our power, having it all be so different and strange. It was a terrifying experience. She looked straight at Cadence. But when we realized what it meant and what we could do with that newfound power, we knew we had greater purpose, greater responsibility. Cadence smiled too, giving a nod of agreement. Well, there's no doubt about that. Ponykind entered a time of peace that it had never known once you two entered the picture. Luna's smile faded. For a time, anyway. Until me. Cadence knew that she'd struck a sore spot, and so her voice became appropriately apologetic. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean- But Luna shook her head. No, no. It is no trouble. I erred, Princess. And my sister did her duty to protect Equestria from a tyrant with dark designs. She took a breath. And for a thousand years she led them well, guiding them as a gentle mother over her children. Her smile returned as she thought on that. I am truly proud of my sister for what she has done these past centuries, giving Equestria such peace and prosperity. Looking to her, Cadence too regained her smile. You can help with that now too, you know. Luna sighed. Perhaps, though I doubt other ponies would agree. She glanced down her own hooves. I appreciate them making a big show of welcoming me back to my old self in Ponyville, but my actions cannot be forgotten. I was a monster who tried to usurp their beloved princess and bring eternal might. I nearly killed Twilight and her friends. Forgiveness will be a long time off. And wanting me to actually rule alongside Celestia? That will take even longer. Cadence actually smirked here. Maybe not as long as you think. Ponies are a forgiving bunch after all. As for your crimes of the past, most ponies nowadays see Nightmare Moon as a myth or a fable. It's just something to tell stories about to cults and fillies to get them to behave. There's even a whole day to commemorate it. That got Luna's interest immediately. A day of celebration? For my dark self. There was a nod from her fellow princess. And one of the most popular occasions of the year. So believe me when I say that if you were to approach any pony nowadays and ask them how they feel about Nightmare Moon, hatred is the last thing you'll get as a response. Luna stared out of the nearby window for a long time, mulling over those words. <sighs> I wish I could believe that. Cadence reached out, placing a hoof upon Luna's. Things are difficult right now, I won't deny that. Both you and your sister have been through a lot of dark times together, and I'm not gonna lie to you and say that your return is going to be without bumps in the road. But I promise you, Whatever fears you have, there will come a day when you can step outside those doors and walk among other ponies, as though you never left. Luna finally looks back to her, offering the smallest of smiles. Equestria is fortunate indeed to have one such as you as one of their princesses. She arched an eyebrow. Tell me, what domain do you reign over? She placed the hoof upon her own chest. I brought the knight, so let's see rules the day. What of you? Cadence's smile widened. Love. It was that which I fought to defend before my ascension, and it is that which I now stand as the guardian of. Luna took a moment to let that sink in, then gave a nod of acknowledgement. Then I would say that love has itself a fine guardian indeed. Caden smiled in appreciation. Thank you. As before, Luna looked out of the window. I have a long road, it is true. Perhaps a day will come when I can step out and walk among my beloved ponies once more, as I did in ancient times. Perhaps there will also be a day where my dark actions of the past are a better memory for me, instead of the stain that they are today. But those times are still ahead, and for now I feel I need to content myself with simply adjusting to how much this nation of mine has changed in the centuries of my absence. The Princess of Love chortled after hearing that. Then I'd say you've got your work cut out for you. From what I've heard, the Equestria of your day was quite a different animal from what you'll find today. Luna looked back to her. Even my brief stint in Ponyville proved that much to me. A village that did not even exist when I last experienced freedom. She considered her own words for a time and then smiled. A village that will no doubt have more than its fair share of thrills in its future, now that my sister's apprentice resides there. Fondness came to Cadence's expression after hearing that. Twilight? Oh yes, that mare has quite an exciting future ahead of her. You mark my words. Luna looked to her with curiosity. You know her? A proud nod from the other princess. I should say so. I was her full setter back when the two of us were younger, and her brother serves as my sworn shield. Luna tapped her chin. Such a young age, yet already closely associated with the two alicorn princesses. A knowing smirk came to her. I see my sister's pension for long-term chess games has not dwindled during my leave of absence. I know a plan of hers when I hear one. Cadence giggled. Oh, you're not wrong. You should hear Auntie Tia talk about whenever she receives one of her assignments. Luna raised an eyebrow. 
Auntie, Tia? Cadence blushed with some embarrassment. Oh, yes, it's uh, j just what it came to call Celestia after a while. A moment of pause between the two alicorns, broken when Luna again smiled to her, reaching out and patting her on the hoof. In that case, welcome to the family, Miamar. After seeing the other mare return the smile, Luna continued. You said that your friends call you Cadence. May... may I also do so? To that, Cadence beamed, as if waiting to hear that all day. Princess Luna, I would be delighted. All of this, super sweet, and it's nice to imagine how those two actually met together. And same goes with other characters too in the background of things. Now let's get on to our exceptional donators. Top donators, TacoCat598, Peter Coldhard, J10 Man, Darkside, Gauntlet, and only one thing. Zartsex30, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Rowland, CrazyKiller557, Nike Kruger, Dospo, Madman Stan, Delta Omega, Jack Hedge, RuneTithe9852, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Michael Dale Moore, Dash of Evergreen, Rani Dragonwolf, Ponyman, Tall Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brethren Mordred, Ron and Wandering, Random Person Man Guy, Easy, Skyuchia, Leslie Prickett, Jordan Peterson, Crimson Kitten A9, Lightskin, Monster Kitty, Misa Life, Milan Behan, and many more amazing people. Thank you all very much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.